Hello and welcome to another one in my series of talking through how you do various things in the ArcSight solution. Uh, in this example, I'm actually going to go into a popular request uh, of how you actually go ahead and do some processing of a unrecognized log file. Uh, and I'm actually going to use a few examples here. I'm going to do it as a file and I'm going to do it as a syslog stream as well, just to illustrate that. But before I do that, I need to give an example of a, of a log file I want to do some processing on. Uh, and this is actually quite a good example I'm going to start with. So uh, as you can see here, I've got a, a whole bunch of uh, log entries uh, open in my favorite log um, viewer text editor, mm -hmm. log, uh, which is called Text Wrangler. I do uh, thoroughly recommend it as a text editor because it highlights things quite nicely. Um, so I'm actually going to just talk through briefly. This is going to be a multi-video series. So uh, to start with, uh, I, how you would approach looking at the log file. So in this example, of course, if I was just to feed this through a smart connector, it's not going to get re recognized. It's not going to get processed, it's going to come in. And typically when you spot a log file that uh, isn't getting processed correctly, the whole log entry will typically just get placed into a particular field within the ArcSight system as a whole. So it, it's pretty useless to use at that point. And as you can see here, this is a physical access log. And uh, I need to look at and understand some various things. D to start with, let's just understand that ArcSight uses tokens. So you have to tokenize things out to understand what's actually going on. So you need to break things out. So we need to, for example, uh, highlight things like the, the username. Uh, we need to highlight the particular location. Uh, we need to indicate uh, direction as well, in and out. For example, you can see some some in and, and so on there. So we need to understand how we're going to process that out. So we need to start understanding the log message as a whole. So just very briefly to start with, we need to start approaching this and understanding the fields that we want to pull out of this particular log file. So you can see here we have uh, a date and timestamp. We also have a secondary date and timestamp as well. Um, now, we can process that. There is additional fields for doing uh, timestamps within ArcSight as a whole, within the, the common event schema itself. Uh, but in this example, we can see that this is just a second delay. So it's obviously uh, the, the time that this was initiated, and then, for example, the time that it was actually completed. Uh, so do we need to store that secondary uh, time there? Possibly not. And we'll come to that when we actually do the processing. But we're looking at things that differentiate, things that separate the tokens effectively that we need to, to extract from this file. So we can see there's a, a, a date and timestamp. Notice there is no year here. So we're going to have to add that ourselves as part of this processing here. But we have uh, a, a month, a day, and a time. Uh, so we'll have to add the year later. We also have a uh, particular action that's been completed. So in this example, uh, it's been admitted. We uh, So that's a, an action element that we want to extract. We also have a username and the card that's registered to that particular person as well. So this is going to be interesting when we start looking at uh, understanding people coming and going. Are they using uh, multiple cards? Are cards being used by different users and so on? So it's kind of interesting. Some use cases are already starting to come out just by processing this log data. We also have a, a particular location. So again, we could also put some geographic stuff on this so we can see that this is customer services, accounts, IT support, uh, and it turn, if you've seen any logs from physical access systems, that's typically some sort of turn style or access gate. Uh, and then we can see the actual action there, which is in. Um, so we can see already that there's a whole bunch of tokens we want to extract here. So just to recap, we've got a timestamp, we probably don't need the uh, secondary time here because it's only a second difference here. So we probably can ignore that. We can see an action. So in this case, admitted. We can see a username uh, that we want to extract as well. So the person that's using this. The actual card identity. So the, the actual reference serial number, or whatever it is for this particular access card. And we can see a location with it as well. And then finally, uh, a, a direction uh, of being allowed in to this particular physical access system. So we can see there's only a limited number of uh, actions or, or fields that we want to draw out here. Uh, it's pretty simple. This is a very simple and straightforward example. Uh, and we could use some uh, some straightforward ways to process this. However, and again, this is this is the first step in looking to process this as a log file. You'll see that there is there is no comma separation here. Uh, there's no uh, common 
separator element to those particular tokens we want to extract. In fact, we actually have two spaces there. We have one space there. We have another space there. Uh, in this example, we probably want to extract not just card, but we just want to extract the number, the, the unique element here as well. So we make it easier to process. And we've also got some additional processing we want to do here. And again, we can't use underscore, we can't use dot, uh, and so on with some of these references. And we've also got some special characters here because we want to do some processing. This, this uh, square parentheses bracket here, we want to extract that too. So it's starting to give us some indications of how we want to go around processing and extracting this data so we can do something and put that data into the particular fields. So that's a quick step through of how you would start to approach this. Look at the log file, understand what the data is, start to understand what it means and how you want to start processing the data. Some of it you will want to do. So we want to get the uh, the date and timestamp. We want to get the person, the username. We want to get the unique uh, card that's been used as well. We absolutely want to get that information. But some of this data we want to ignore. So in this example, we don't want to get this secondary bit here, which we can do. So that's an initial quick step through of how you would look at and approach some of the log data uh, in its raw format before we even start doing any processing and start hacking together any uh, flex connector to actually process this data. So that's the first step. Look at the log data, understand what's in there, start figuring out what the tokens are we want to extract and what the data is. That will start giving us some of the use cases. So from this example, what are the use cases? Well, they're starting to be fairly obvious. Uh, as I mentioned a second ago, we can start to identify if a particular person is sharing a, a particular card. So if there's uh, multiple people going in within a very short period of time, you can start to see if they're, for example, uh, if they're being used in different geographic locations. So we can start to do some mapping around what we're seeing at these particular locations with uh, IT support, uh, accounts, customer service, because they'll be typically in different parts of the building. So if we're seeing multiple accesses on the same access card in different parts of the building, then we can start to do some tracking around that. And also we can start to see if, um, if particular people are using particular cards that they shouldn't have access to locations as well. And we can start tracking that too. And of course, we can start correlating that with logins in particular areas. So classically, things like IT support locations are going to have different access rights uh, to various systems, applications, networks, and environments. Uh, so again, we can start to control some of that based on user access as well. So as you can see, the use cases start to tell themselves just by looking at the log data and just by understanding how we can break things out with the tokens. So that's the first step. Start understanding the tokens, start understanding the fields. That will start leading to some of the use cases and how we can process that data. So that's the first step. Uh, next, I'm going to start digging into further details of how we're actually going to process this and the Flex Connector infrastructure as well. So thank you very much and on to the next video.